The Barbarian Barrel is a two elixir spell added into Clash Royale on April 6th, 2018. But what seems like a fierce competitor to the log today did not seem like the case back then. Log and Zap were by far the two most popular cards in the game, or at least in the top five in terms of use rate. Ever since Log's buff to be able to knock back any ground troop, it has been a vital card to have in a lot of popular decks with its unique ability and versatility. But with appearing in nearly half of all decks, it became a bit stale. Although the card had high use and win rates, it never really felt overpowered, but just really versatile, which made it used a lot. What Log needed was a true competitor. That's when later, they came up with the idea of the Barbarian Barrel. A card that rolls like the log, but spawns a barbarian upon its completion. However, the Barbarian Barrel of 2018 was nothing like the Barbarian Barrel we see today. It certainly took a long journey for the Barbarian Barrel to get where it is today. In fact, it is the second highest touched card in the game with 13 balance changes, and it came out two years after a huge amount of other cards. The number one card is the Witch with 16 changes. So in this video, I will be going over the history of the Barbarian Barrel, how it went from being a joke to a true rival to the almighty log. The Barbarian Barrel had actually come out at a pretty bad time. Although bait had been popular for a while, the meta at the time of release was pretty prince-oriented. Princes were both very popular, which meant the Barbarian Barrel already had a disadvantage to the log, not being able to push back princes when the log could. Although the Barbarian could stop a prince charge, the prince would one-shot it, and this was less effective for a log for one more elixir. What's interesting is that the Barbarian Barrel could actually knock back troops, but only troops that could take knockback normally. So cards like Barbarians did take knockback, but cards like Prince certainly did not. The Barbarian Barrel also cost three elixir, which meant it was more of a commitment to play. I think the idea was that you could use the Barbarian Barrel on a princess or something for an equal trade, then have the Barbarian get value? There really wasn't a situation at this time where a Barbarian Barrel was better than a log. The Barbarian Barrel also rolled really slow, so you may be wondering. Did the Barbarian Barrel have any more advantages than just the Barbarian it spawned? Well, at the time, Barbarians were actually much stronger, which meant they could survive a fireball. The Barbarian Barrel also rolled 6.5 tiles, rather than today, where it only rolls 4.5 tiles. It listed in its stats that it could deal Crown Tower damage, but it was actually impossible to ever get the Barbarian Barrel to touch the tower directly, so there was obviously a mistake somewhere. When using a Barbarian at the bridge, the Barbarian Barbarian would get three hits on the Princess Tower. Unlike the Barbarian Barrel today, which only gets one hit on the tower, the Barbarian Troop played a big role in the Barbarian Barrel's journey as well. In 2018, it only had a hit speed of 1.5 seconds, whereas today the Barbarian's hit speed is 1.3 seconds. The Barbarian Troop was prominent in three other cards, so now all four cards had to be considered when balancing. It was tough, because cards like the normal Barbarians were awful around this time, whereas Battle Ram was actually pretty decent. At this point, the Barbarian Barrel did more damage than today's Barbarian Barrel, as it was able to kill princesses at an equal level. A cool fun fact is that the Barbarian Barrel's damage was actually exactly one less than the log. It was intended to be the same, but this was actually because of a rounding error due to the Barbarian Barrel being an epic and the log being a legendary card. This kind of rounding error also happens with the Ice Spirit and the Heal Spirit, the Heal Spirit having exactly one more HP than the Ice Spirit. Only 19 days after it was released, the Barbarian Barrel would receive its first change. This change wasn't really to make the card viable, but to fix the mistake they made upon releasing it. This card was supposed to be able to reach the King Tower, not the Princess Towers, but only when it was placed in the furthest tile in the pocket of the base. To make sure the Barbarian Barrel could reach the King Tower, its range was increased by half a tile from 6.5 tiles to 7 tiles. This certainly wasn't enough in itself to make it viable, so more buffs would be soon to come. 
On June 4th, the card would be buffed again, but it was another small change. The Barbarian True would receive a hit speed reduction from 1.5 seconds to 1.4 seconds. This is because all the Barbarian related cards weren't really good at the time, so it made sense to buff the Barbarian True. But again, it wasn't enough to entice players to choose the Barbarian Barrel over the log. So just 16 days later, the card would be buffed again. The Barbarian Barrel damage was increased by 17%, and an indicator would be added so players could see where the Barbarian would spawn. This indicator helped a lot more than you'd think. This change made Archers die to the Barbarian Barrel, which was actually a nice change to see since the log couldn't do this, but it still wasn't quite enough to make it viable. If this card was going to be a true competitor to log, it was clear that it would need an elixir reduction. Supercell got the message that the Barbarian Barrel just wouldn't be able to compete with the log at 3 elixir. The cost was just too much. So on September 3rd, 2018, the card was reworked to 2 elixir. Supercell in return reduced the damage of the Barbarian Barrel by 9%, completely took away its knockback ability, and reduced the range from 7 tiles to 5 tiles. This now meant it couldn't deal Crown Tower damage anymore, but people really never used it to cycle on the King Tower anyway. And now if left alone and placed at the bridge, the Barbarian would only get 2 hits on the tower rather than 3. It should be noted that the Barbarian Barrel could still kill Archers and Princesses, but now for a positive Elixir trade. So this buff made the card quite strong. Not only could it now kill cards even the Log couldn't kill for a positive Elixir trade, but it spawns that bonus Barbarian. This card was finally viable after nearly 5 months of it being out. And another month later, on October 1st, 2018, the card was actually buffed again so that the Barbarian Barrel would roll faster and the Barbarian would deploy faster from it. The Barbarian Barrel was at its peak of strength. It was fast, it killed so many troops that the Log couldn't even kill, and it even had the same width as the Log, which meant those one tile off Goblin Barrels didn't matter. So let's recap on what made this version of the Barbarian Barrel better than the one we know today. The width of the Barbarian Barrel was 33% bigger than the one we know today, being 3.9 tiles rather than 2.6. The Barbarian had 13% more hit points, making it survive a fireball. The Barbarian would start attacking 0.15 seconds faster at this point as opposed to the modern Barbarian Barrel, and the damage was so high that it could kill archers, which even arrows couldn't kill at the time. This notably made it extra good against Expo decks. The Barbarian Barrel wasn't in a competition with the Log anymore. It had won. The Barbarian Barrel had so many advantages over the Log. Even though the Log had knockback and crown tower damage, the Barbarian Barrel could still kill all the same troops the Log did plus more. But the battle was not over yet. We're not even through 2018 yet. On December 3rd, 2018, the Barbarian Barrel's damage was reduced by 5%, eliminating its ability to kill archers at an equal level. The next month, it would be nerfed again so that the Barbarian Barrel would not attack right away, but rather take 0.15 seconds to attack. This change allowed defenders to have some reaction time to distract the Barbarian so that the Barbarian wouldn't just attack whatever the Barbarian Barrel player put it on. On March 4th, 2019, the Barbarian Troop would actually receive a change that would affect the Barbarian in the Barrel. At this time, the regular Barbarian card was getting a slight rework, where they were now able to die to Fireball, but the number of troops in that card would go from 4 to 5. This was actually a response partially to the prominent Three Musketeer Battle Ram meta. At this time, the Battle Ram was actually being used as a lightning shield with Three Musketeers, as it could absorb all three lightning strikes, leaving the Musketeers unscathed. And actually at this time, the Barbarian Barrel, Battle Ram, and Barbarian Hut were actually all really, really good cards, whereas the Barbarians themselves were suffering. Because of this, none of the other three Barbarian cards were given any compensation buff for their nerf. On the first Monday of Season 0, June 3rd, 2019, the Barbarian Barrel would receive a 10.5% reduction in damage, but even with this, it could still kill princesses, and this change actually changed no major interactions, so this nerf really didn't hurt the Barb Barrel. Less than a month later though, the width of the Barbarian Barrel would go from 3.9 tiles to 2.6 tiles, so it would no longer match the log's width. 
where it was officially confirmed to be a bug. I find this a bit suspicious though. If this was a bug, why did it take over a year to fix? Why would they change this card so many times without fixing something that blatantly changes interactions? It sounds like to me, they just threw in the logs with as a temporary stat and just never bothered to change it. After all, they were trying to make this card an alternative to the log. So of course they were basing a lot of features from the log. But who knows, because bugs with cards commonly last months within the game of Clash Royale. Like, I shouldn't even be surprised. There's still fisherman bugs that have been in the game for years. Despite all these nerfs, the Barbarian Barrel was still a thriving card. It stood the nerf hammer time and time again and was still most people's personal choice over the log. Sure, the log could knock things back and chip the towers, even was able to kill a goblin barrel and a princess at the bridge, but the barbarian barrel could still kill princesses and dark goblins as well as goblin barrels with the bonus of that barbarian which the log couldn't give. It could tank hits, it could tank for inferno towers. This card was good, but it wasn't actually too too strong. However, since the card was causing log to drop in use rates, the card's damage was still nerfed by 15%, which made this card have the lowest damage it had ever dealt. It not only could not kill princesses or dark goblins anymore, but it couldn't even break the shields of cards like guards. Now, this is where the Barbarian Barrel is unique within its history, because this meant now that the Barbarian Barrel had received six nerfs in a row when no other card in Clash Royale history has ever been nerfed six times in a row. Zat was nerfed four times in a row, Log was nerfed five times in a row, but even they got bug fixes which technically buffed them a little bit. Barbarian Barrel broke this record without even the slightest buff or compensation. It had received six stat decreases within an eight month period. The card became useless pretty much overnight. The Barbarian could still be useful sometimes, but changing so many of these core interactions really hurt the card. Log was once again the superior choice because of its versatility and Barbarian Barrel became quite a niche card. Three months later, with the Witch and Elixir Golem finally toned down, on November 4th, 2019, the Barbarian Barrel would come back into Supercell's radar to receive one final balance change. This card was being buffed practically every month since it had been released, so this was actually almost the longest it had gone without a balance change. But all it did was buff the damage again by 8%. It had flip-flopped so many times at this point, it became unclear to some players on what Supercell even wanted this card to be at this point. The card still couldn't kill princesses or dark goblin, but it did allow the card to break shields once again, which made it a better counter to guards and dark prints. Just the sheer fact that this card was balanced so many times in just the first couple years of it being out really shows just how badly Supercell wanted to get this card right. After the November 2019 buff, there was some disagreement over this card. Some people said it was dead because killing Princess was an important role in the card. Others believed it was still good because even though it couldn't kill Princess, it could counter cards like Musketeer and Bandit. But regardless of how good the card actually was, this card was straying so far away from the log. Was it even a competitor anymore? They both had completely different functions at this point. The card seemed bad for a while as not being able to kill Princess seemed like a big disadvantage to the log, but as the meta settled and new metas arise, the Barbarian Barrel use and win rate actually slowly rose, finding a solid place in the meta on its own. From being changed at least once every couple months, this card went unchanged along with the log for many years now. The battle had finally seemed over. Both cards were different enough to be used while both being popular. However, even though the use and win rates between Log and Barbarian Barrel were both decent, these cards were still way higher in comparison to the use and win rates of the other cards in the game. And they only kept rising with time, whereas other popular cards eventually phased out. Both cards may have seemed somewhat equal to each other, but to the rest of the game, they were insanely versatile and good. And remember Zap and Snowball still existed, so Log and Barbarian Barrel were actually taking away spotlight from these cards as well. A lot of people clamored for a zap buff rather than a log or a barbarian barrel nerf, but did that really make sense? Zap's use and win rates were actually still pretty okay. 
Barbarian Barrel and Log just had exorbitant win and use rates. You may wonder why cards like this can get away with being so good for so long. Why is Witch nerfed after a month of being good, but Log and Barbarian Barrel just slide under the radar for years? Because you know if a troop like Witch had these exact same win and use rates as Log or Bar Barrel, it would be nerfed into the ground. Well, there are two reasons. Spells are just blatantly less annoying typically. Or maybe I should just say small spells. Part of balancing Clash Royale isn't just making sure these cards are statistically balanced, but the game is fun to play. People just tend not to notice when spells are really strong in comparison to troop and building cards. This is why cards like Firecriver and Battle Healer are never buffed, despite their long-term abysmal use in win rates, and why they were nerfed despite being statistically balanced, even arguably a little underpowered before their nerfs. The second reason is that spells in a way act as a counter to the meta rather than being a meta themselves. When the Executioner becomes overpowered, Rocket comes into the meta. When Archer Queen is introduced as an overpowered champion, Lightning skyrockets in use rate. Some spells in Clash Royale are meant to counter troops and not much more. This means no matter how good they are statistically, it won't break the game in the same way that an OP Witch will break the game. Now, let's fast forward from this time all the way to 2022 for that final 13th balance change. Going into 2022, Barbarians, Battle Ram, and Barbarian Hunt were all weak cards. So in June of 2022, all of the Barbarian cards would get a hit speed reduction buff once again from 1.4 seconds to 1.3 seconds. Although the Barbarian Barrel didn't need this buff because it was the only really good Barbarian card, and even though the log had been shining slightly above it at the time, the log in the same balance change would be getting a Crown Tower reduction nerf. So to prevent Barbarian Barrel from becoming the superior spell, the range was reduced from 5 tiles to 4.5 tiles. This interaction made the Barbarian Barrel only be able to get one hit on the Crown Tower rather than two. The nerf seemed a little harsh though and the community was not in favor of this change. But the rework actually ended up not affecting the card too bad in either way. Some even say it was a buff overall. I mean, remember, it's not just used as a pressure card. It is used to take out buildings on the other side of the river and can get a lot of value if it gets a lot of hits on defense. So where does that leave the Barbarian Barrel today? Currently, it sits at a use rate of 17% with a win rate of 55% in Grand Challenges, which are both very solid stats for a card. This makes it the seventh highest used card and eighth highest winning card in Grand Challenges. Although used less than the log by about 27%, it has a much better win rate. Both cards certainly have their place in today's meta, and I am curious to see if these cards will receive any more changes anytime soon. I can certainly see the argument for either leaving these cards alone or nerfing them further. Personally, I would like to see a small nerf to the log just because of its exorbitantly high usage rate, but I feel as I cannot give an objective opinion as a Barbarian Barrel player myself. From being a terrible laughingstock mockery of the log to a true worthy rival even to this day, the Barbarian Barrel has certainly come a long way in not only competing with the log, but finding its own unique niche within the Clash Royale meta, being a solid card for nearly three years straight. Thank you for watching this overview and analysis of the Barbarian Barrel. I hope you learned a thing or two from this video. And let me know if you're on Team Bar Barrel or Team Log. Let me know what other cards you'd like me to make a historical analysis video on. Thank you all for watching, and take care.